Hey there guys, Bobine Hamster here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Sparrow. Sparrow is one of, if not the best, ADCs. Um, she certainly is comparable to, if not better, than Murdoch. The only difference being is that Murdoch has uh, better survivability than she does. But I think overall she, she does the most damage. Um, and if you've got a good team comp that can keep the enemy away from you, then she is a better choice of ADC. I also like her because her ultimate means that you do not really have to be that good at aiming. Um, and we'll be going over that in a second. So let's take a look at her, her ability, shall we? So bow shot here, guys. She does a basic damage of 50, 50 attack damage. It's not the best in the world, um, but her power scaling is one to one. That means for each power that you have, you're going to do one damage. In addition to that, she gets one damage per level. So by level 15, she's going to have an extra 15 damage to that. Um, and if you've got 100 power, then she's going to do an extra 100 damage to that, guys. Um, now, both Murdoch and Sparrow are, and Seraph are the only three heroes, I believe, that have a one-to-one -one power scale on, on their damage, uh, which makes them very, very good for doing high amounts of damage. Piercing shot here, guys. Whilst, whilst holding, Paro, uh, Sparrow charges a powerful arrow that does up to 80 ability damage to all enemies in a line um, 2500 units the arrow will travel through both enemies um, and the world maximum damage will be done if charged for at least one second so this piercing shot here guys has a power scaling of one so again if you've got 100 damage you're doing an extra 100 ability damage on this bad boy um, this is quite good for getting kills especially when they run away from you uh, 2,500 units is further than her auto attacks, so you can, if someone's running away from you and they've only got like 100 health, you can quite easily take this down. At maximum level, this does 260 damage, so if you've got an extra 150 power, then you are going to be doing um, 3, 410 damage with this bad boy. It is a very, very good ability. A very good ability when only an eight second cooldown guys you can use this maybe two or three times during a fight it is pretty pretty good um hail of arrows here guys now this is this is good when you um combo this with relentless and i'll explain why in a second so sparrow is down arrows in the area dealing um dealing ability damage over four seconds okay um so to start off with level 1 it's 40 and at max level it's 160. The power scaling for this is 0.25. So you, you're never going to use this as um, a way of killing someone. Okay, But it uh, helps with your other ability in a second. The power scaling for this is 0.25. So if you've got 100 power you're going to be doing an extra 25 damage to this. The mana, more, uh, mana cost is 135. So you do that damage over the duration of 4 seconds with a 12 second cooldown. Um, now this is good because it applies stacks of Relentless when you hit someone with it. Okay, now let's take a look at Relentless. Um, successive hits on the same target deal additional damage. Okay, this affects stacks and is triggered by any damage uh, Sparrow causes. Stacks up to five times, yeah? Five times, guys. Wow. So, um, it's insane. This is insane. Okay. Um, 6.5. Where are we? 6.5 times 5 equals. So, if you get this up to maximum level, it does an extra 32.5% damage. Okay? Now, um, a stack of Relentless is hit on your target every time they get hit with Heal of Arrows as well. Um, so over the 4 seconds, if they get hit 4 times by that, once by your auto attack, they are automatically going to be taking 32.5% damage from your auto attacks. That is insane! That is absolutely insane, guys. Um, she just does so much damage. That is insane. Uh, inner fire. Inner fire, guys. 
Um, fires a triangle of three piecing arrows for the next ten seconds. Wow. Okay, they've reduced this to seven seconds. Um, the reference here is a little bit old. Uh, so seven seconds. Side arrows deal 50% of the short bow damage. Um, increases with each level of ability. Okay. Um, so at maximum it does 90%. 90% of your side damage, okay? Um, so, I start off with Piercing Shot. And the reason I start off with Piercing Shot is because, you never know, you might have a very aggressive um, uh, support with you. And there's nothing more frustrating than having someone get away from you on 40 health, yeah? Or something like that. So, I always skill my Piercing Shot first, okay? My Piercing Shot into relentless into hail of arrows okay i then max out piercing shot because at maximum this does a shed ton of damage and it's going to help net you kills i then max out relentless every time i can i get uh, in a fire and then uh, the last thing that I max out is the Hail of Arrows because you're not really worried about the damage that Hail of Arrows does. You're only really worried about the stacks of Relentless that it puts on your opponents, guys. Okay, so that's it. So Piercing Shot, Relentless, Hail of Arrows, max out Piercing Shot, max out Relentless, get in a fire as often as you can, and then Hail of Arrows first. So let's go take a look at the build that I have for her. This is my Sparrow deck, guys. Okay. Now, um, I have been using Sparrow quite a lot recently. And I think I'm about 67% 60, win rate with her. Um... She's pretty cool. She's pretty cool. So let's take a look at what prime we go for. So we go for the Warlord. Why do we want to go for the Warlord? Well, um, she does a shit ton of damage. Pardon my French. Shit ton of damage to uh, to towers. So you don't need uh, your minions to be doing extra damage to towers. What you do need is you need the minions to push as fast as possible to get you to the tower. Okay? Because the quicker you get to the tower, the quicker you can take the tower down. All the inhibitor guys, okay? So we're going to pick the Warlord here because this does an extra 100% damage uh, for the um, minions towards the other minions that are in front of you. We've got a Strike Token here, a Healer Token, a Blink Charm. We've got Sage's Ward with two greater healths and a, um, a three cost power token. We've got Spear of the Rift Hunter here with a three point crit, a two point power and a one point power. We've got a Spear of the Rift Hunter here with three three-point power tokens. Spear of the Rift Hunter here with three, a two, and a one power token. We've got Wing Carver Blade here with three one-point power tokens. Wing Carver Blade with another three one-point power tokens. Hunter's Guile here with a three-point health, a one, and, and two one-point power tokens. We've got Swift Seeker Heart here with a three, a one, and a one um, attack speed token in it. And then we've got Sword of the Altar with three one-point lifesteal tokens in it, guys. Okay, so here's what you want to do, guys. You're going to start off with one of your Wing Carver Blades. Okay, gives you that little bit of extra damage, a little bit of attack speed uh, that you're going to need. Uh, that six power that you got, that is an extra six damage, so you're going to be hitting for 56, uh, which is enough to be able to last hit quite proficiently. Um, if you find you are taking quite a lot of harassment um, and you've only got like two or three points, you can go back, get yourself your healer token or a strike token, um, but chances are you're not going to be taking a lot of damage in the early game because you're ranged. The person that should be taking the damage should be your support. Okay? Um, you're going to finish both your Wing Carver Blades first. This is going to give you a nice bit of damage, nice little bit of attack speed to start off with. You're then going to decide what you need. What do you need? What is your opponent that you are facing? Are you facing an Aurora? If so, you're going to need your Hunter's Guile, guys, because this... This is the anti-Aurora card right here, okay? Now, most supports don't bother um, 
carrying a purity sensor, um, which is the AO version of this, okay, where everyone that's around them, um, it removes the debuffs. This is a personal one, guys, okay, and this removes the debuffs from yourself. So generally, um, I take a look at my, my support, I ask them, do you have a purity sensor? Nine times out of ten, they're like, nope. So... I have to put this on if I'm up against an Aurora. This is also really good for getting you away from um, from a Chimera as well. If a Chimera jumps you, you just pop this, run away from him. Yeah, he can't catch up with you whilst he's auto-attacking, which is pretty cool. So, um, after you've done that, you are going to go for one of your spears. It depends what you want to do, okay? Uh, for me, I usually go for the uh, the three, two, one power token one in, um, just to the the extra power um, that you're going to do. Um, you're then going to swap out the wing carver blades to get yourself your swift seeker heart to do extra fast attacks. Um, after you got your first spear, you then get your second spear here, okay? Um, your third spear uh, comes after you get your sword of altars. Um, so your maximum build, if you've got your Hunter's Guile, will be your Hunter's Guile. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, if you don't need your Hunter's Guile, okay, this is when you can have your wards. Maybe your uh, support is stupid enough not to have wards. It happens, guys. Trust me, it happens. So... You're gonna you're gonna pick this instead of your hunter's guile because maybe they don't have an aurora, um, so you don't need it. Yeah, um, so you can use your wards here. Now, generally, if you've got a good support, you won't need wards because then you've got an item that you're not really using that much in your uh, your inventory. Um, so I, I generally very rarely use this. Okay, but if I do, then obviously this is a 12 cost. You've got your two 12 costs in here. So you've got sage's ward, spear of the rift hunter. Um, all three of those Spirit of the Rift Hunters here, uh, you would then have your Swift Seeker Heart on top of that. So one, two, three, four, um, one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? Now, with 15% life steal, you can still solo the Prime, okay? Um, if you take a look at the video that I just uploaded, you will see me actually, um, actually soloing the prime so uh what what are, what are your tactics with sparrow well your tactics with sparrow guys are quite simple you set the lane for a slow push rotate and destroy your enemies simple as what do i mean by set the creep wave well go take a look at my sparrow video i shall link this right now um, after I finish making this video um, to the video that in involves how to set waves and create a slow push and you'll see me rotate and killing people anyway guys let me know how you got on with this build um, let me know if there's any builds you would like to see that I haven't done yet guys um, before all of this changes um, if this helps you guys give us a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and I'll see you soon guys Take care.